Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole, and welcome, finally, to my Asian Beauty Waterproof Sunscreens video. Today's video has been a long time in the making. I am going to be talking about four J Beauty sunscreens, two K Beauty sunscreens, all of which claim to be waterproof, asterisk, water resistant. <laughs> As always, timestamps and links are in the description box below. I did buy all of the products in today's video and I really tried to buy a mix. I bought some of the most popular J Beauty sunscreens, I bought your requests and recommendations, and then I threw in some that I was interested in that I didn't see very much information about. It's quite a mix. And as a spoiler for this video, you know how I do try to grade sunscreens. Let me tell you in advance, every one of these sunscreens I think is a good option. I do have a bit of a disclaimer for today's video. I bought all of these on Yes Style, which side note, YesStyle is enjoying these 15% off weekend coupons. Check the description box below. I'll give you this weekend's 15% off. That's what I use to buy these. Always stack an affiliate rewards code so you get 17 to 20% off. There's mine. Uh, but what I wanted to say with the J Beauty sunscreens is I noticed that while YesStyle is really good about listing out the ingredients of the K Beauty sunscreens, and in case they aren't, it's always on the box in English. That is not the case with the J Beauty sunscreens. These are all in Japanese, and in all truth, the ingredients list doesn't seem to translate well when I do run these through my translator. In fact, some of them don't even have an ingredients list at all. So I really want to make sure to say, as a channel that is so ingredients focused, because I do have allergies, I think a lot of you might even relate to that. If you see any mistakes in this video, especially with the J Beauty sunscreens that I'm worried about, please correct me. I am a human being, I am going to make mistakes, but it is more important for the final information that is put out there to be correct than for me to, I don't know, have an ego boost or something. I'm going to make mistakes. I did in my Torigen video, and thank you to the person who caught that. So it's a bit, you know, nerve-wracking to know that I don't have the same level of confidence with the four J Beauty sunscreens in this video as I do with the K Beauty sunscreens. That's nerve-wracking for somebody who cares about ingredients. Additionally, while some of these sunscreens have the phrase waterproof on them, I do want to note that within the US, we don't have that kind of language. We have water resistance for 40 minutes and for 80 minutes. I guess this can vary by country. It is much more accurate to say these sunscreens are water and sweat resistant than to say they are fully waterproof. It's just, it's more accurate. A couple of things from my notes. One is that I'm really surprised by how easy all of these, all of these were to remove with a cleansing oil. That surprised me. These were easier to remove than some of our Western mineral waterproof sunscreen, water resistant sunscreens. That's very interesting. And also, I do recognize that some people are looking for reef safe sunscreens. That's not a regulated term. And frankly, I, I feel like we don't have a lot of information about this. I don't wanna dismiss concerns because I really think we just don't have enough information. So I've just decided to, again, do my best to put the filters up on the screen so you can decide, check the regulations in the areas that you are going to. And finally, this video will show footage of application of all six of these sunscreens, as well as more discussion of my thoughts. And we will have a water resistance test towards the end of the video, which will need its own disclaimer. So I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to make a helpful video. As always, feel free to share your experiences, your thoughts, what sunscreens you love. And without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to do the J Beauty sunscreens first because I do feel like we talk more about K Beauty. So let's start this video with what I think is one of the most popular J Beauty waterproof sunscreens, and that is, of course, the Biore. The Biore Aqua Rich Watery Essence SPF 50 Plus PA 4 Plus. This is on all kinds of waterproof sunscreens lists. And you can probably see from my packaging here that I do like it. And the reason I like it is because, wow, this is so fast to apply and it has absolutely no white cast whatsoever, none. This goes on clear and it goes on fast. It does have a really strong alcohol scent to my nose. This is another one of these very subjective aspects of skincare. 
So for my nose, it's a lot of alcohol. And finally, once this is applied, this is a very glowy sunscreen. <laughs> If you like the E-Century original hyaluronic acid, you will probably love the finish of this because wow, you will be glowing. And similarly to the E-Century that glow, it kind of does subside a bit, but it's still a very glowy sunscreen. This is where I feel some people might be divided on this, and in all truth, <laughs> this is where I'm divided. It's so funny, I feel like people expect me with my dry skin type to love glow, but actually my skincare routine already makes my skin really glowy. But again, you see, you can see, I am actually loving this. So let me tell you a little more. We'll put the rating up on the screen. While this is really dewy looking, it's still very fast. While it does smell like alcohol, which I don't love smelling <laughs> right under my nose, it is uh, great on my body. So it's almost funny how the very same attributes I don't love on my face are what's making this really ideal to just quickly throw on my arms, on my legs. It's fast, it's quick. I don't care if my elbows are glowing to the gods. <laughs> Y'all remember that phrase? I'm still somewhat scarred by it. So in the end, I am giving this a solid A, but for me personally, because I was looking for a body sunscreen and this perfectly fits the bill for that purpose for me. Let's move on to one that I picked out. So this is called the Suncut UV Perfect Milk Super Waterproof SPF 50 plus PA 4 plus from Kose. This one, I've not heard a lot of people talk about. I have heard a lot of people talk about the gel version, whereas I bought the milk. So with the gel, I saw a lot of people say that one is very mattifying, which had me all ears. But when I was reading through the reviews, I saw a lot of people say that they were dealing with pilling. If a lot of people are saying a product is pilling on them, I am probably not going to purchase that product. I know that when makeup touches that, it's just going to be worse. <laughs> so I decided to try the milk version, which again, haven't heard much about. I, um... <laughs> I love this. This might actually be my favorite face sunscreen out of the J Beauty sunscreens in this video. In applying this, you do need to make sure you shake this one first. It's got the little bead in it to make that more, I feel like more intuitive and also so it mixes better. It does start with a bit of a white cast, and I think that makes sense because we do see zinc oxide in the ingredients, but it blends out really nicely. And it does, in fact, look matte on your skin, but not super matte. This is more of a soft matte, a satin matte type of finish, which is exactly what I look for in sunscreen, and yet it's really hard to find. And of course I had to try makeup over this, because, you know, sometimes we are looking for sweat resistance as opposed to water resistance. This is actually wonderful under makeup. Wonderful. Now it is slightly drying, but not so drying that I wouldn't wear it. I, I, I've talked about this recently. I feel like there are quite a few of these zinc oxide containing sunscreens where the dryness, it's not what it used to be. And this is one of them. It is a little bit of a smaller bottle, but again, this is a sunscreen that I am going to reserve for my face because I like how it looks on my face. It's a little bit slower than the Biore but I love that finish. So in the end, here is my ranking of the Kose Suncut Perfect Milk Sunscreen. I love this one. I still feel uncomfortable giving it a, a full A+, because I don't know if it's gonna work on deeper skin tones, and I don't wanna forget about that in doing my reviews. Plus, it's a little on the drying side, so I'm gonna give it a solid A, but I'm gonna tell you, I am so glad I bought this, because for me, this is what I was looking for. Why, why doesn't anyone talk about that? Is that some undiscovered, it's not even expensive. Why do we not hear more about that one? Next up, I did buy another semi-popular product, although this seems to have been reformulated. This is the Nivea UV Deep Protect and Care Gel, SPF 50 plus, PA 4 plus. I think that's the main difference in this one. If I'm understanding correctly, previous versions of this were not PA4+. Mm, this one. So in applying this, 
This one is a little more runny. Now, I can handle a bit of runniness, so I didn't really think this was going to be a big problem, but I do feel that kind of slows down application. I wasn't sure that I was applying enough of this in the clip that you are watching, and I made a big mistake in this very clip. Whatever I did led to this getting in my eyes, and I'm not somebody who talks a lot about getting sunscreen in my eyes because it doesn't happen that often to me. As I, I've mentioned in other videos, I, I wear makeup, so I put powder around my eyes and it seems to really help prevent the sunscreen from going into my eyes. But I got this one in my eyes and oh my gosh, it burned. It burned for hours. That was a very unpleasant day. I don't want to ultimately let that detract too much from my experience, but at the same time, realistically, it does. This is not the most runny sunscreen in this whole video, so I will say I kind of feel it was more of a learning curve. Now that I have it down, it is faster for me to apply this, doesn't have a white cast. It does look glowy on your skin, but again, some people are looking for that. So in the end, with this one, my rating is a little negative, an A minus. I mean, that's not too bad. But then in the eyes experience, it's, it's kind of hard to look past. It's hard for me to get past that. So for me, this is another body sunscreen. It's another one where I'm glad to have it in my collection. I will absolutely use this one up, but it is one where I don't, I don't think I'd buy this again. I think that between this and the Biore, I did prefer this one just a bit more. Again, I'm doing my best to describe the smell on all of these. Smell is something that is very personal. To me, this one, this smells very familiar. It really does smell like cocoa butter to my nose. Our next sunscreen is another one where curiosity got the best of me. Lest we forget, I am a cat. Oops. You know what that means. So this is from Roto, the company that makes the Milano CC Essence. This is called the Sunplay Super Block SPF 130 PA4+. This one actually claims that you can reapply this every four hours, which isn't something that most dermatologists would recommend. That's not something you could put on a US sunscreen. But you know, I was curious. I just had to try this. This is also the sunscreen where I have the least confidence in the ingredients list on this one. There is nothing on the packaging, nothing. And this one is kind of expensive. It's kind of expensive per ounce. This is only a 42 gram little bottle here, but I had to try it. I had to. And here's my conclusion. I don't dislike it. It does have uh, all of the filters, if my information is correct, while still saying it's reef safe. Interesting. But I kind of feel, I, I kind of regret buying this because I feel like it's really easy to say, okay, well that's an SPF 130 where it says four hours of sun protection and water resistance. That's going to be the best in the video. And I actually, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that this one is actually any better than the others I tried. So yeah, if you are, you know, curious like I am, sure, I mean, you can try it, but I just really want to make sure I'm clear on this, that I don't think it's better than any of the other sunscreens in this video. So again, I will put my ranking of this up. I'll, I'll give it an A, but I do want to make sure to stress that again, I'm not confident on the ingredients, and also I just don't think it's better. I think it's more expensive but I don't think it's better. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, I'm giving it an A, but I, I don't think you need this. I, I, I think your money will go farther with the other options in this video. Let's get into the K-Beauty sunscreens. Again, this is hard to find in K-Beauty, so I bought two of them. I will say that neither of these have any uh, water resistance claims on them. This one right here, we'll just go into this one first. The Misha Waterproof Sun Milk SPF 50 Plus PA4 Plus. This one was highly recommended. Now, this is the most runny sunscreen in this entire video. It is such a runny sunscreen. And the other thing is, in applying this, wow, there is a strong scent. Now, I've already said in this video, scent is something that is very personal. There could be some people that love the smell of this. I have to admit my own bias. Wow, I really do not like the smell. 
This is a strong baby powder scent to my nose. It is very, very strong. I do like the finish of this. I would say it's a little more matte than some of the other options, but even then I would say it's semi-matte. It's still a, a little glowy. We're not really in the official matte territory, in my humble opinion, as somebody who lived through the 2000s. <laughs> Nothing is as mad as the 2000s though, let's be honest there. So I feel like with this one, I like Misha, I like that it is more affordable, you know, you're getting a good amount of product here, 2.36 fluid ounces, but at the same time, in my own perspective, because that's always what you watch when you watch one person's opinion, I have to say this ended up being not my favorite sunscreen in this video. It's just a combination of that runniness and that strong scent. I still think it's a good option. Don't get me wrong, I'm giving it an A minus, but it's just not my favorite. But I don't wanna forget what I do like about this. I do like the lack of a white cast. I do think that the filters used in this are a good choice for some of the areas that have restrictions on what filters you can use. So again, for me, it's an A minus. I probably won't repurchase this. In fact, I'll probably pass this one along because scent is something that influences our own experience so much, but I still respect it for what it is. But we aren't done with this video. We still have one more to cover. And if you've noticed, none of these sunscreens have quite had that A plus rating just yet. Well, hang in there because we are going to talk next about the Face Republic Purity Sun Essence SPF 50 Plus PA 4 Plus, which came so highly recommended by Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. We are finally talking about a sunscreen where I feel that the filters used in this will work out for most people. I haven't had that level of confidence until this sunscreen. And again, because it's K-Beauty, I can verify these ingredients. This is gorgeous to apply. This applies exactly like all of those other K-Beauty sunscreens that you've tried. Your Beauty of Joseon, your Skin 1004, this applies just like those. That does mean there is a bit of a white cast, but I feel it dissipates completely on my skin type. Again, I'm not sure this will work on all skin tones, but it does completely vanish on me. Feel free to comment if you know more about how this works for deeper skin. And it wears so nicely under makeup, again, because it does feel like you're applying Skin 1004, Beauty of Joseon, etc. It is a beautiful, water-resistant, sweat-resistant sunscreen. There are a handful of other catches for me with this, one being that, again, we don't have the water resistance measured, so I kind of feel more comfortable saying that with this, as well as the Misha, personally, I would feel more comfortable using those more as a sweat-resistant sunscreen. And again, this one does contain technically an essential oil. It is the Artemisia vulgaris oil ingredient. That is an essential oil, but it's kind of, for a lot of people, a lot more in the category of tea tree oil. It gives this product a faint, kind of herbal scent. So in the end, yup, the Face Republic is my A-plus sunscreen, but I mean, again, it is a bit of a big catch that I don't really know how water resistant this is. So definitely things to keep in mind, but I'm very impressed with this. I am very impressed with this. This will be my choice for when I know I am going to be sweating. <laughs> that happens a lot for those of us in Florida. In fact, last night, no joke, we had a brownout and our AC unit made this big boom sound and stopped blowing cold air. I am so glad we have in the family someone who works on AC units. We called them immediately and they said, don't worry, that's common. Just make sure you uh, turn the breaker off on your AC unit and wait a couple of hours. So we were sweating for a couple of hours, but it kicked back on. I forget the reason why. <laughs> They had a whole explanation. I forget the explanation, but I'm so glad to be sitting here in uh, AC right now. I'm so glad. <laughs> we have one more section for this video and that is the pool test. Now I need to give you some disclaimers here. First of all, I wanna say I really feel that content creators cannot test the UV protection of sunscreens. 
I know some try. I do think that the intention is good, but that is something that I really think a lab needs to do. There are just reasons why it doesn't work for us to do that. You know, I've seen the UV cameras, which no comment. <laughs> no comment for now because I would go off too much. I saw somebody do a test where uh, they had little little strips all over their arm and they used a Q-tip to apply. That's a methodology problem right there. That's <laughs> The Q-tip is going to absorb some sunscreens and some more than others. So that didn't test the UV protection. It tested how much the sunscreens absorbed into the Q-tip. It's the same reason do not use a beauty blender to apply your sunscreen because what will happen? The sunscreen will absorb into the beauty blender. So this is all to say this test is not looking at UV protection. That is just beyond my scope. I wanted to test how waterproof these are, but even in saying that, I have to acknowledge my limitations. This is something where just take this more as entertainment. Maybe it's a little helpful, but it is no replacement for a well-controlled study. Sure enough, this could uh, this could get us the the clinically proven label on products, but that's because that label's not controlled either. So yeah, this is really just, it's just for fun. But here's what I did. I used electrical tape to separate my, my calves into six sections through which I applied all of these. I waited about, it was about 30 minutes until I got to the pool. And then I did my best to swim in this. This is again where I feel we had a little bit of a problem. Everything was going so well until I, I realized one of my tape sections was starting to feel a little loose. <laughs> you know, you try. You really try as a content creator, but it's, it's, it's harder than it looks to get these kind of tests right. <laughs> so I swam in the pool for a while, rescued a frog while we were there. This is why I can't go anywhere. This poor little frog, he had jumped into the pool and I, I think he couldn't get back out. So Ara picked him up first. She picked him up and he did not want to go back in the water. We realized we, we had to help him out. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to make it from the chlorine in the pool, but we've been constantly changing his water every day, giving him vitamin enriched crickets and worms. And he, he's, he's looking pretty good. I think we just have to find the right place to release him. So frog rescue <laughs> slash sunscreen test. I uh, ended up in the pool for maybe 30 minutes. Minutes, and then I spent another 50 minutes laying out in the sun. So I don't know if these conditions would replicate being at the beach, constantly having the waves crash into you, or swimming for a full 80 minutes, but I did decide to go with the 80 minutes test because again, that's US regulations. And here's the biggest surprise for me. I was actually, I was actually worried about the face republic, and I really did think I was going to have some tan lines that I would have to explain every single time I wore shorts. And uh, here's, here's, the, here's the final results. Again, it's not to be taken as proving anything, but I do feel that, I do feel I can say all of these are water resistant. Again, I can't really prove how much they are water resistant, but I was pleasantly surprised that I will actually not be walking around with unusual tan lines. <laughs> and no, I don't think the for our sun protection did any better. I don't think the Face Republic did any worse. They all seem to offer water resistance. And my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. Again, if you didn't already gather it through the video, these two ended up being my favorites because of personal preference. As always, feel free to share your thoughts. If you have a favorite water resistant Asian beauty sunscreen, feel free to comment that or any of your experiences with any of these. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Make sure to stay protected from the sun in this hot summer having. And I will see you all next time.